I came to the Four Seas in 1995. That was my first Four Seas. I was a winner for the Scholars for the Dream Award. Um, Jackie Royster was chair that year, so she gave the chair's address, and I distinctly remember going to the Scholars for the Dream breakfast and meeting a lot of people in that network. Um, and I met Jackie Royster right before her talk, so when we filed in to hear her chair's address, we were sitting right in the front row, and I, um, it really shaped a lot of what I do in the discipline, even to this day. The first time I attended the Asian Asian American Caucus meeting was in 1999. Uh, at the first four seasons in 1995, there was a caucus on the program, but I believe that was a caucus that was intended more for second language learners, and it, that was just not something that I was particularly interested in in terms of my research. Um, and in, in later years, it was listed as a business meeting, and I wasn't sure what the business meeting was about. Um, and at one point, Cecilia um, Milanis Rodriguez had invited me to the Latino caucus meeting, but by that time I had met Morris Young in 1998, so I went to the first caucus meeting in 1999. And I really think it had something to do with meeting someone from the caucus and having that person welcome me and invite me to the caucus. So I try to do the same when I meet um, new scholars for the dream. In 2002, I presented at CES for the first time, and uh, I received one of the Scholars for the Dream awards, which was really amazing. And um, as a result, I guess Lu Ming Mao um, at the time, I think he still does, makes an attempt to go to pre presentations by Scholars for the Dream, and so he came to mind. And I was really surprised and, um, and um, just taken aback that he would take the time to give me feedback and ask good questions. And after the presentation was done, he invited me to the caucus and told me a little um, about what it, what it was about. Um, I didn't really understand what the caucus was because it was listed as a business meeting, uh, but he explained that it was a supportive community for people who uh, were Asian, Asian American, or interested in Asian, Asian American issues and composition. Lu Ming Mao and Morris Young were instrumental in developing the caucus, but also in developing the field of Asian American rhetoric. I think their senior leadership was particularly crucial for a few of us, me and Hyman Huang in particular, uh, who were emerging scholars at that point, graduate students, who were struggling to do some work, some very underrepresented and emergent work in the field. Um, and their scholarship sort of led the way, but also their mentorship in terms of reading our work, giving us feedback, even allowing us to read their book proposals and other kinds of work in process, making sure we had a place on the program, um, and providing a home for us at Four Cs where we could network and develop our own conversations. Lu Ming Mao, Morris Young, and Paul Matsudo were all very influential in terms of shaping the caucus as, as we know it uh, today. Um, it was really important to me to see the range of work that each of them represent in the caucus, um, in particular seeing Asian and Asian American rhetoric side by side in Lu Ming's work. Um, thinking transnationally and internationally in terms of uh, rhetorical practices, looking at the Asian American context uh, within Morris's work and understanding Asian American literacy practices within larger racial legacies and the broader scope of ethnic studies, um, and then thinking about second language writing and how um, people of Asian ancestry may or may not see themselves as second language writers within our classes. Um, I think seeing that range of work between language, literacy, and rhetoric, looking at um, U.S. racial legacies, transnational contexts, global contexts, that was really important to me in terms of thinking about how broadly our caucus could be defined and the kind of work that we could support. Mm -hmm. The Writing and Working for Change project has been really instructive to me, and I think probably to the caucus as a whole, in that um, we have asked over the years, you know, how did the caucus begin, who was involved, and I, I don't think we really knew for certain. I, don't th I think we still don't know completely for certain, but um, I do know that Lu Ming Mao has told us that the caucus um, had originated, as far as he knew, um, before its current iteration at least, in NCTE, and its focus was on uh, second language writers. One thing that's been fortuitous about the Writing and Working for Change project is that Jennifer Sano Franchini is at the same institution as I am. So we've been able to work together and talk through some of the issues that come up as she's been developing it. And one thing that we learned when we went back to NCTE is that there was a poet, Lawson Fusao Inada, 
who was actually part, there wasn't an Asian and Asian American caucus, but he was very active with the Black Caucus and other caucuses at NCTE. And so it was interesting to learn that, and then to learn about the legacy of Jeffrey Chan and um, Frank Chin in terms of working on the NCTE Task Force on Racism and Bias in the Teaching of English, and how that still shapes the way they think of NCTE. They no longer want much to do with NCTE. Um, but there's sort of a gap, in, our, in my knowledge at least, in terms of what happened with the caucus between those years. I, I imagine that people were still active, particularly in these co coalitions across the caucuses. But the Asian Asian American Caucus was set up more as a caucus to support teachers of English who were teaching students where English was not their first language. And I felt, as far as I know, it wasn't until 1999 when Lu Ming Mao was invited to revive the caucus that it became the current instantiation that it is now. But I do think there's a lot of history there that we still have yet to unearth. And I'm not sure that we'll always find it in the archives. So I think that there are other ways we might try to learn that history. When Kathy Yancey was chair of C's, she had invited members, a couple of members, um, a couple of leaders from each of the caucuses to a meeting in Virginia to discuss our relationship to NCTE. And um, the NCTE uh, officers and Kathy were uh, wanting to invite us to establish a more formal relationship with NCTE. But in talking with the other caucus leaders, I think we all agreed that we could um, embody more of what Chandra Mohanty calls a culture of dissent by maintaining our independent status but being connected to C's um, on our own terms. So in that way we could uh, offer critique without fear of being um, already folded within the structure of NCTE. I think our relationship with other caucuses at Four C's is really important. If we, you know, after working with the Writing and Working for Change project, we learn how deep those alliances went, you know, back to people like Jeffrey Chan, Frank Chin, and we also learned at the NCTE sessions last year that there was a poet, Lawson Fusao Inada, who was also involved with other caucuses at the Four C's, even though there wasn't an Asian, Asian American caucus at NCTE. And so I think those alliances have been around for a long time, even the Mixed Blood Collective that I was uh, a part of before I became a member of the caucus, in terms of supporting our work. And I think we struggle with very similar issues in terms of our presence at C's, the presence of our work in the discipline, um, the need to draw on very, very different interdisciplinary work to develop our scholarship. And so I think those alliances are important. But also when issues come up that that impact our professional life at C's. Yesterday, one of the co-chairs of the other caucuses approached me because some of their graduate students have been experiencing challenges on the job market in terms of how they're being treated and the kinds of questions they're being asked. And so I think there are times when we need to come together and see if there are patterns of concerns that impact the caucuses and come together as a unit that expresses those to the organization. And I think it's really important for the caucuses to come together, and I think most of that happens informally. Uh, we've tried to do some formal gatherings after the meetings we have a cross-caucus mixer, but I think that it's hard to get people to come to that because the caucuses end at different times depending on what kind of business they have going on. It's a late night, we've got the, the award reception, we've got the caucus meetings, and then we have the cross-caucus meeting, which if people are hungry for dinner, then it's 9 o'clock before we're done for the day. So I think it, it is a challenge to get the caucuses to meet and mingle, but I think that we meet and mingle in other spaces that aren't necessarily organized by the C's. I was co-chair of the caucus with Nancy Lynn Carls from 2005 for five years. And during that time, um, at the very start, we felt it was important to uh, just clarify our mission because we wanted people to feel invited and wanted uh, to be, become more visible to graduate students. Um, so we, we saw our, our mission as um, being twofold. Uh, one is to support Asian and Asian American scholarship within the field. We felt that that's very necessary and that we should support people who are doing that regardless of whether they were Asian and Asian American. Um, and second is to support Asian and Asian American scholars themselves, um, whether or not they are doing work about that particular population right, or racial category. Um, and in particular, it, uh, one thing that came up during my term as caucus co-chair was that in 2008, NCTE had a task force for supporting scholars of color in the report. Um, it came out that there were only 27 of 
of the thousands of members in NCT, there are only 27 members who self-identified as Asian or Asian American, which um, I think was meaningful for our caucus in that we really wanted, felt a need, a, a serious need to support Asian and Asian American scholars in the field. Um, also during our term, we tried to start some writing groups because uh, one of the challenges is that the caucus only meets once per year and we wanted to establish community among the people um, who come to the, to the meetings. Um, another challenge is that the graduate students often, uh, and, and faculty, but especially graduate students, can't afford to come to the conference every year. And so we wanted to establish some community virtually and we thought uh, establishing small writing groups might be helpful. Um, so we did that for one year, and um, in the small group that I was a part of, one of the graduate students was actually successful in getting a grant, which was exciting. Um, and I found, uh, I got very good feedback on a conference presentation. We only did that for one year, partly because of logistical challenges of everybody's schedules, and the difficulties of, um, I think the graduate students maybe were a little more uh, reticent about sharing work, being younger and not knowing us as well. Um, so I think maybe one challenge ahead of us is just continuing to find a way that we can uh, maintain relationships with one another in the caucus and continue to support that community. Nancy Lynn Carls and I felt that one of the challenges in contributing to Asian Asian American scholarship within composition studies is that uh, you have to do a lot of legwork and interdisciplinary work when there's not already secondary literature in your field. Um, so you have to do a lot of work in, it might be in TESOL and applied linguistics, it might be Asian American studies and ethnic studies and American studies, it might be in literary theory. Um, so we wanted to create a website that would at least house some bibliographies that would be useful uh, to scholars within the caucus. So as a start, we asked caucus members to submit to us um, sources that they've written, that publications that they've written um, that might be helpful to younger scholars and we started to create a website that would profile these scholars and also uh, provide resources for others who might be interested in, in these issues. I see my role uh, as current caucus co-chair as one in where I provide a network of support particularly for young scholars. Um, there were three Scholars for the Dream winners this year who were uh, potential uh, future members of the Asian American Caucus, so I approached them at the Scholars for the Dream reception and invited them and explained to them what the caucus was about um, and even explained to them it's not just a caucus for people who do work on Asian American language practices, but just a caucus of support for Asian Americans as well. And so I think that one-on-one um, -on -one invitation really goes a long way, and so I gave them my card and I, I'm, I think all three of them are going to try to attend um, meeting but I think that it it teaches young members what it means to build a network of support what it means to navigate this large organization of four C's um, how to build alliances with other caucus members uh, how to get published you know just so many things that I think young scholars are not always aware of